In this video, I'm going to be beating the entire pre-hard mode of Calamity Infernum as the Gunner class, which means I will only be allowed to use gun-related weapons. Calamity Infernum is more painful than I thought. Make sure you stick until the end, because I did quite some unexpectedly stupid yet interesting stuff. Only a small percentage of you guys are actually subscribed to my channel. So if you enjoy this video, please subscribe and get this video to 7000 likes for hard mode. Calamity is a mod filled with fantasy elements and unlimited possibilities. Just like the sponsor of today's video, Call of Dragon. Call of Dragons is an MMO fantasy game developed by the creators of Rise of Kingdoms. They've been working on this game for more than 3 years. It's basically a strategy game with MMORPG elements that allows you to freely dive in and explore a fantasy world with unlimited possibilities. Recruit Elven Maidens, Mighty Orcs, Powerful Frost Mages, and countless other magical heroes. Explore the journey of fantastic wonders. Join allies to hunt terrifying behemoths and expand your territory. With 8 unique behemoths, master each behemoth's attack pattern to withstand their devastating attacks and fight back to your fullest to emerge victorious. Fight to the death and conquer the behemoth to recruit them to join your alliance. There is no limit to how many behemoths you can capture. Catch them all and use them as your weapon of war. Dominate the battlefield in an enormous land of incredible creatures to become the powerful dragon lord. With many ways to fight, truly huge battles, and amazingly huge strategic freedom. Not to mention PC and mobile crossplay. What are you waiting for? Master dragons to rule this world. Download Call of Dragons using my link below or scan the QR code. Become a beastmaster today. You can use the special code COD Monster to get special rewards in game. Thank you, Call of Dragons for sponsoring this video. Alright, let's start this playthrough, shall we? I'm gonna chop off some trees. While I was chopping off trees, something fell down. It was an eucalyptus sap. This item summons a pet sugar glider, and turns out it only has a 0.1% chance of dropping. Well, that's a lucky start. Then I opened the Calamity starter bag to receive tons of beginner items. I decided I'll be going the gun class in this playthrough, because I've done true melee before. I almost forgot to enable the Infernum difficulty, but here our journey starts. Since I'll be doing the gunner class, I need to go to the corruption biome ASAP to get myself the musket from breaking shadow orbs. I just just have to get lucky and find the correct pit to fall. Can't be that hard, right? I've been through 5 damn different pits and all of them are dead ends. Without realizing, the day has turned night. So I decided to build some insta houses first, because I really need the arms dealer NPC. I was too bored to wait for the morning, so I went back to the corruption. I want that musket. At last, finally, I found the right hole. I wanted to break the shadow orb over there. I successfully bombed it down and it dropped the musket. But right when I was about to acquire it, I ran out of breath and drowned. Amazing. Well, that's a pain in the arse to grab it back. Anyways, I went back to the hole and acquired my first weapon in this playthrough, the musket. Now I can finally defend my property with my deadly firearm, just like like a true American. On the morning, I went to the desert biome to farm some desert feathers, a material I need for the desert prowler armor. Then the arms dealer moved in, so I had to buy some ammunitions first before continuing my exploration. Oh hey, look, an inner tube. I look goofy as hell with this inner tube. I love it. I explored and looted a living tree. I tried to explore the underground jungle biome only to become piranha food. I found this huge mahogany living tree though. It was a huge mistake to bomb down the hive blocks. But yeah, the huge mahogany living tree led to a huge queen bee hive. This will be a useful location for later. One of the wool from enemies drop a rover drive, an accessory that gives you defensive barrier. Pretty cool. Then I went to the right side of the ocean. I just wanted to get some useful loots man. I keep getting tubes and trash loots. But I did not want the exploration to be a waste. So I bombed down some ores and gems in the caves. Once I get home, I crafted the wool from Blunder Boss. It got an annoying modifier, so I had to craft another one. This thing is a decent early game range gun. I also crafted a topaz hook to aid me in mobility. After organizing my crafting stations and crafting a loom, I realized I forgot to grab some cobwebs. So I bought more boom shurikens from the demolitionist NPC, and I proceeded to explore more of the underground near spawn. Would you look at that, a spider web biome. I'm not too unlucky after all. I got a web slinger hook from one of the chests. Remember kids, with great power comes great taxation. I gathered a lot of cobwebs. In the next chest, I got an Eye of Tulu spawn. Well, that's pretty neat. Then I found this weird location with like an enchanted sword thing. It kept saying the X reject your attempt at claiming the blade. Huh. Anyways, I went back home and crafted the Desert Prowler armor. The first range armor in this playthrough. It has a special ability that makes you fast but reduces your defense. I tried my luck with the two random teleportation potions I found, only to end up in the underworld and getting brutally slaughtered by a voodoo demon. Well, at least I did not die alone. 
While I was exploring, I found this corruption altar. It gives an effigy a corruption key and a lot of money. Well, that's pretty useful. Then I explored the underground snow. I got myself some crappy loot. While I was exploring, I got a message of an evil presence watching me. While some of you might think it's lucky, in my case it is not. Because I just found a dragon lab that I could have explored. I had to quickly go back to spawn just because of the message. I had not even built a proper arena. There is no way I could defeat the eye of Tulhu right now. But to be fair, I'm dealing a decent amount of damage to the eye. But the problem is my lack of preparation and arena. Not to mention, I don't have any mobility accessories. Then I did the stupidest thing possible by trying to talk to the nurse to heal myself. Wait, what? Oh, I forgot! Infernum nurse can't heal during boss fights. Okay, fuck you. Anyways, back to the snow that I don't lab. You go to destroy the laser turrets first. I destroyed the turrets by mining it below the blocks they are located. Just to be sure, I destroyed every single turret in the lab. Yes, including this one under the water, so I can get access to the ice chest. I got a diving gear, pretty nice. I did a lot of mining and exploration, and gathered some useful loot in the process. Then I used the teleportation potion, and it teleported me to the underground jungle. This feels dangerous, but I'll try to get as many loot as possible. I got a boomstick from one of the jungle mini shrines. I did not want to be greedy, so I teleported back home. Then I used the gravitation potion to find some floating sky islands. I'll explore the main big planetoid later. Well, I got quite disappointing sky island loot. But at the end, right when I found a sky island, I got brutally slaughtered by a group of harpies. Well, that's just perfect. Now I have to build to reach that sky island. Does this look funny to you? I swear I am going insane. Finally, I reached up the sky island. All that effort for a single shiny red balloon. But hey, it ain't that bad. I needed it. I explored a bit of the sulfurous sea, but I got nothing. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I went back to looting caves and hey, I found a warding Hermes boots. Pretty nice. Then I got a fungal symbiote from the glowing mushroom biome chest. This thing used to be a lifesaver during my true melee playthrough. I got a plot in the battle from this gold chest. Then on the marble biome, I found a skeleton American NPC. Apparently, this guy is selling a carton of milk. Damn, my dad should have met this dude. He's been searching for milk for 10 years now. Then I farm life crystals in order to max out my HP. As it turned night time, I tried to give Eye of Tulhu another shot. Oh no, oh no! I did craft some silver bullets to help increase my damage. I was so stupid to think that it would help. Yeah, I think I should buy the mini shark. What could possibly go wrong? There is a goblin army approaching from the- Oh, it's morning! It's morning already. Shit. A goblin invasion started the next morning. Well, that's fortunate. I wouldn't say the goblin invasion is hard by any means. And ranger is definitely a safe class because you can hit enemies from afar. But the damage it deals is barely tackling the enemies. The community told me it's because of the high armor enemies have in Infernum. I am starting to regret my class choice. But yeah, I completed the goblin invasion with much ease yet too much time consumed. As it is the next night, I crafted some potions. I am also starting to regret spending 95% of my earnings and buying the mini shark. The community told me that boomstick is better due to the high armor bosses receive in Infernum, though I was able to consistently get Eye of Tulhu to its second phase. But I don't think I'm ready yet. I bought Bloody Tear from the Abomination NPC. I turned it into Blood Orbs. Then I crafted the Crackshot Cold. This gun might look basic at first, but you can use it to toss a coin that ricochet bullets. Pre-hard mode is about to be wild. Then the Traveling American NPC came. I wanted to buy the Frost Shield, so I sold a lot of my gold bars and silver bars. Then I bought a Slime Rain Spawner from Abomination and summoned a Slime Rain. I realized that Crackshot Cold isn't the best at clearing a lot of enemy waves. I switched to my Mini Shark and it went better. So it turns out buying Mini Shark wasn't a complete waste of all. Then out of a random nowhere, I got jump scared by the King Slime. Damn, he is really big. That was unexpected. The first phase went like the usual King Slime. It is easy and chill, and it went smoothly. But the moment King Slime entered his phase 2, he summons this floating ruby jewel that shoots out projectiles. And the fight just got at least 3 times harder. Trust me, it is harder than it looks. I successfully managed to take down the ruby jewel. The fight went back to being easy. Then as my guard is down, King Slime summoned the crown jewel again. I hate this fight. Out of a random nowhere, the ninja came out of King Slime's body. I can't believe I am seriously getting overwhelmed by a literal king slime, the easiest boss in Terraria. Then finally, I took down the annoying floating ruby jewel. Now all is left is King Slime's main body. With my low HP, can I manage to defeat him? The King Slime itself wasn't a huge problem at all. It was the projectile spam. So the answer to that question is yes. Yes, I can. 
I got a slime saddle mount from the treasure bag. The first boss has been successfully defeated in Infernum. I spent the next days fishing. It was extremely boring. But finally, I got myself the River Shark pickaxe. River Shark did not get nerfed in Calamity. I did not want to stop there. No, no. I also wanted the frog legs. So I spent another two days fishing. I know it's very boring. But luckily, I just remembered I have the point shop mod. I just have to beat enemies for points. Bro, look at this ugly uh, shark. It almost killed me though. So I ended it suffering. Then I redeemed the frog legs from the point shop. The crates I fish give me quite some loot. Very nice. And I farm for some beach materials for an armor later. I made a hole for water to fall down and create obsidian with the lava. I mined down the obsidians and accidentally killed myself with the lava. Then I used an instant elevator to get myself to the underworld. Now I will proceed to get some hellstones. Okay, bad idea. Let's redo it again. This time with obsidian skin potion. Alright, it's much better. I am single-handedly ruining the hellstone ecosystem and economy in the underworld. I got the voodoo doll too from one of the demons. Now that I have hellstones, I crafted some bars from it. Then I used the bars to craft the firestorm cannon. This thing is an upgrade to the flare gun. I bought a lot of blue flares from the American NPC and I turned it into unlimited flares. Blue flares look better than regular ones and you can't say otherwise. Then I bombed down the desert on the right side to get myself to the underground desert biome. I mined down some desert fossils for the fossil armor later. I love the ore excavator mod. Then while I was exploring the underground desert, I found the desert shrine. It contained the Luxor gift accessory inside of the chest. This accessory basically lets the player shoot extra projectiles. I went back home and sifted through a lot of desert fossils on the extractinator. Then I crafted the fossil armor. I should be ready for Eye of Tuluhu now. So I summoned the eye boss. Let's just say that maybe I am a bit too over prepared because I am doing really good DPS to the eye. It is not broken or anything. It is still balanced, but it just felt really powerful. During Ice Phase 2, it dashes more often and it shoots a train to it upwards that functions like dangerous hazards. But it was not really an issue because my damage really made the duration of the fight much shorter. But like, come on, I'm using Hellstone Tier Firestorm Cannon. And on top of that, the addition of my newly found Luxor's Gift. And yeah, just right before morning started, I successfully killed the eye. I might have overgeared just a bit too much. But hey, if it works, it works. I got the Shield of Tuluhu which gives me the ability to dash. Knowing I have powerful gears, I crafted the Desert Medallion. Then I head towards the Desert Biome to summon the next boss, the Desert Scourge. The fight wasn't even a challenge, I definitely overprepared. And especially with my Shield of Tuluhu, I can easily dodge most of these big worms attacks. Honestly, I should have fought Desert Scorch first. Don't get me wrong, this fight was fun. But it was definitely much easier than Idri King Slime or Eye of Tuluhu. I'm literally using a weapon made out of Hellstone materials. And as you guys might have already expected, Desert Scorch only took me one try. I mean, are you guys even surprised? I got Pearl Shards from the treasure bag, which I turned into sea remains. Using that, I crafted a Reed Blowgun. A blowgun that fires a high pressure stream of bubbles. And the Fictite Armor. The armor and the weapon fits very well together. I created an arena on the corruption biome, and I destroyed the Hive Tumor to summon the Hive Mine. Due to my sheer confidence boost from easily defeating the two previous bosses, I tried to fight the Hive Mine to see if I'm strong enough. I mean, the fight went pretty smoothly at first. I realized that my Firestorm Cannon might be dealing more damage than my Red Blowgun, so I switched to that. Is Hive Mine just this naturally tanky? I think it's just because I'm underprepared, isn't it? Or maybe it's just because I'm aiming randomly. Probably because of that. But hey, I'm dodging these attacks really well. If I keep this up, I could beat this boss, yeah. However, Hive Man got into its phase 2 when I took it down below 50% HP. It received new attacks like Eater Walls and Green Acid Flamethrower. These new attacks ruined my confidence boost really quickly. To be fair, I'm quite new to the Infernum scene, and I don't really know what's going on most of the time. I haven't really learned how the boss patterns actually works and all, I'm just finding excuses for my death, am I? I tried to fight the Hive Man again, got a big disgusting brain to its phase 2, but yet again wasn't as prepared as I thought, so I decided to postpone the fight for later, and I created an arena on the underground corruption. I threw a bomb on the third shadow orb and prepared myself to fight against the Eater of Worlds. I don't know why, but Infernum Eater of Worlds is kinky as hell. Why does it keep trying to pin me against the wall, dude? I am not into this, but thankfully I escaped the corner. Maybe I made the arena too small. Infernum Eater received new attacks like Curse Flame Fireballs that shoot out from both of its body parts and mouth, and even summoning file torn walls indicated by launch, all while charging on the player. Thankfully, it has no immunity to the on-fire debuff, so my Firestorm Cannon might be a good weapon choice. But as you can see, Infernum changed Eater of Worlds by combining it into a single entity instead of separate entities, which means piercing weapons can't chase it anymore. This buff alone made this fight extremely time consuming and hard. The worst part, the Eater of Worlds splits into two separate worms once you beat one down, complete with their own AI and attacks, so you're basically fighting more than one Eater of Worlds at once. This change alone caught me off guard. I definitely lacked preparation and good gears for the fight, and I lost against the Eater of Worlds. So instead, I went to the glowing mushroom biome, and I summoned the Krabulon boss. 
The reason I wanted to fight Krabulon first is because I am sure it is much easier than Eater of Worlds. And also it drops Fungicide, which is one of the ranger weapon I need in order to make the Eater fight easier. Krabulon releases damaging mushroom spore clouds every time it slams the ground. It is also able to summon thin walls of damaging mushroom balls that pierces from the ground. The third time I fought Krabulon, I successfully brought it down to its phase 2, where Krabulon is now able to grow its arm and use it to slam the ground, creating damaging mushroom rubble upwards that range down. I feel like adding the arm slam attack makes Krabulon fight a bit harder than I expected. I wasn't able to dodge it perfectly and got hit few times. It is not hard to dodge, it's just that I was underestimating Krabulon due to how easy this boss in original Calamity. On my fourth try, I was very close to dying, but I managed to successfully evade most of the mushroom slime rain by fitting to its crevices and dashing with my shield of Tuluhu. And I successfully defeated the Krabulon. The first treasure bag did not drop the fungicide gun I needed, but it dropped the mushroom plasma root which I consumed to upgrade my adrenaline meter, and the fungal clam accessory which summons this fungal clam to fight for me by latching onto enemies and stealing their life. I had to fight Krabulon again for the fungicide. This time, because of my fungal clam accessory and because I was used to the attacks, I defeated Krabulon easily for the second time. And luckily, the treasure bag contained the fungicide gun. Fungicide is a gun that converts musket balls into fungal rounds that split on death. This combined with the fungal symbiote is a deadly sporadic combo. Then I explored the underground caverns and found a bonded goblin tinkerer. I bought the tinkerer workshop and rocket boots from him. Using the workshop, I upgraded a lot of my accessories, like getting cloud in a bottle and frost spark boots. Now I should be ready to fight Eater of Worlds. My gear should be min max already due to the accessory upgrades I crafted earlier. However, during the fight, I forgot that fungicide uses musket balls as ammunition, and I ran out of it. I switched to my firestorm cannon that deals way too little damage, so I just decided to give up and die. The next round I fought it, I brought a lot more ammunition and smoothly took Eater down to its face too. It was definitely worth to defeat Krabulon first, because the damage fungicide deals might look small, but its ability to split and hit multiple body parts of Eater of Worlds is extremely useful. And I think I did a great job smoothly dodging all of the Eater attacks. I thought it was over after I defeated two of the Eater Worms, but I was terribly wrong. Because this guy splits into four worms. During Eater's phase 3, there are so much shit show happening on my screen at once. I couldn't really tell what's happening. But luckily, my health wasn't low during its phase 3. So I could do a risky strategy by face tanking some of his incoming attacks. And I berserk through this phase using my fungicide, resulting in me successfully defeating the Eater of Worlds. For some reason, it dropped two treasure bags. Might be a bug, but hey, I'll take it. I got the worm scarf and more demonite ores. While I'm still in the corruption biome, I said kid and decided to straight up fight the hive mine as well. I mean I got the worm scarf now and I also have upgraded my accessories. I should be able to do it right? I got used to hive mine phase 2 and I was able to smoothly dodge most of the incoming projectiles. For hive mine, I used firestorm cannon instead of fungicide because it's harder to properly aim with fungicide but I could just spread the firestorm cannon flares around so at least one or two flares will hit the hive mine. Then out of a sudden, as I brought hive mine down to 20% HP, it got into its final phase. The sky turned dark pale purple with new variants of attacks that are more dangerous. Yes, I died. I summoned the hive mine again during night time. This way, it is much easier to see the incoming projectiles. Look at this smooth dodge I did. I dodged all the acid rain projectiles. I felt like a proto who player for a second. I successfully took hive mine down to its final phase again. All the attacks are improved and faster, like the ether wall being able to go in crook directions. I died to the hive mine one last time. I learned all the attack patterns and I slipped through the crevices of the acid rain. I prepared my health just in case one of the attacks hit me. Then right at the end, I used my rage meter to take the hive mine down. Hive mine didn't drop any notable loot for ranger. However, beating hive mine gives access to being able to mine aerialite ores. These ores are located in the sky islands and I mined plenty of them. I crafted a sky mill. Then I used the aerolites, air, I, you, you know what I'm saying, to craft the full aerospec ranger armor set. I also crafted plenty of acceleration rounds. I went to the underground desert to find the sunken sea. In the midway, I found the infernum desert temple, which will be useful for later, but we can access the dimension now. Then right at the bottom of the underground desert, I found the sunken sea. I have to admit, it does look beautiful, more beautiful than the sulfurous sea. But the reason we are here is for the prism shards. I need these prism shards to craft the aqua shard shotgun. While destroying the sunken sea, I encountered a dragon lab. I went inside of it and looks like this one is aquatic themed. I did not get anything useful from the chest in the lab, but hey, at least the lab looks cool. I like the aquarium. I went back to base and crafted an aqua shard shotgun. This shotgun converts musket balls into aqua shards. But I think I forgot to use the regular musket balls. I went back to the sunken sea and I cleared up some space for an arena to fight a giant clam. Of course, I conveniently found a giant clam chilling in my arena I just made. I just do be lucky like that. Giant clam is a mini boss that is a giant clam, quite self-explanatory. Infernum giant clam is not too different from the original version. 
but it does have slightly more advanced attacks. I almost took down this mini boss on my first try, but there is a random spiky turtle that stun locked me. It's always these tiny mobs, man. And yeah, I died. It's quite embarrassing. Giant climb is not necessarily an important boss that I need to beat. But hey, I gotta defeat all the bosses, you know? Anyways, I beat the giant climb on my second try. Beating the giant climb unlocks the Sea King NPC. I bought the coral cannon weapon from this guy. Look at all these infernum trophies. Very cool, eh? I went to the jungle biome and headed inside this huge mahogany tree we've encountered before in our playthrough. As we're gonna fight the queen bee inside this huge hollow beehive. I made a quick arena inside the hive. Then I destroyed the larva to summon the queen bee. Something weird happened. While I was fighting this queen bee, another one spawned out of nowhere. I was obviously overwhelmed by handling more than one queen bee at once. And yes, I died. Alright, let's do this all over again. Against queen bee, I used my coral cannon and kept shooting upwards without properly aiming. Because I am too focused at dodging the queen bee's attacks. I couldn't be bothered to aim properly. Infernum queen bee feels like an artillery attack helicopter with all this creative variation of bee attacks. She's also now able to utilize and control her bees properly. Man, I can feel Ranger class being underpowered because it took really long to bring Queen Bee health down. I keep getting knocked away by the swarm of bees at times, but there are also times when I'm actually quite proficient at dodging the swarm of bees. I got the Queen Bee to her low HP that she turned into enraged form. I think I might have just killed too many of her children. Well, yeah, I almost killed her, but well, I died. Man, that's unbelievable. I don't get it. Bee puns are not even all that great. I don't get what all the buzz is about. But it's true that some of these bee puns are not too shabby. Alright, I'll stop. I don't want to bug you. Okay, for real this time. Yeah, I successfully killed Queen Bee on the second attempt. I got the flying bee mount, which is great I guess. Man, it sucks that bee gun is mage class, not range. I could have used it. It is time for Skeletron. I built a quick arena, and I spoke to the homeless chippy gaming in the dungeon entrance to summon the Skeletron itself. From what I've looked and heard, Skeletron is a huge massive roadblock of pre hard mode in Infernum. And damn, Infernum Skeletron is really fast. Bro's been working on leg day way too much despite having no legs. Looks like Infernum Skeletron consists of three phases. The first phase is actually quite easy. It consists of low HP and similar to the original version. I immediately took it down to its second phase. You can already tell its next phases are gonna be painful, because on the second phase you're immediately greeted by tons of purple projectiles. But hey, I actually did a great job at dodging lots of these projectiles you know, considering this is my first try. You gotta comment me for that. But I think once you get hit once, you'll start to lose your integrity and get even more hits in row. So yeah, you might not wanna get hit even once. Man, I understand why they put cobalt shield post skeleton, because some of these attacks can permak knock you. I already know this is gonna be downhill from here, so I built a house with a bed beside the dungeon. I wish there was an item that gives you immunity to knockback before Skeletron. It would help this fight so much. But hey, it's just the first death. It couldn't be that bad, right? I hate Skeletron so fucking much. But I think at this try, I got Skeletron to its final phase. It can do like a skull right now. At least an improvement from my part. Yep, that's it. Fuck off. But I ain't no coward. The next day in real life, I fought Skeletron again. I wanna get this shit over with. There are moments when I'm extremely close to dying. But no, I won't give up. Finally, I took down Skeletron to its final phase. I pushed forward to the last remaining percentage of Skeletron's health. I successfully did it. I defeated Infernum Skeletron. Finally, we are now able to access the dungeon. As we enter the dungeon, I found a bonded mechanic. I don't want to spend too much time in the dungeon, as we only need some bones from defeating enemies for necro armor, cobalt shield, and handgun. I luckily found handgun on the third lock chest, and a cobalt shield on the fourth chest. Once I went back home, I immediately upgraded my handgun to a phoenix blaster. I know it's vanilla, but it ain't that bad. And I upgraded the cobalt shield into obsidian shield. I crafted the deer club summoning item on the demon altar. Then I went to the snow biome to make an arena, and I summoned the deer clubs. I'm a beer with you. I don't want to fight the deer clubs at all. It doesn't drop any loot that I really needed, but I just have to defeat all the bosses, you know? Infernum deer clubs phase 1 is not too different from the original one, but like it has these two ice walls that keep you inside of the arena. I need to fix my arena because deer clubs kept going inside of the water. Yes, I died. Let me mine this meteorite crater first that I should have mined earlier. I turned some of it into super ball bullets. Looks like placing wood on top of the water doesn't help with the deer clubs being stuck in the water issue. Just kill me already, man. Alright, I covered the water with wood. Let's summon the deer clubs again. Its phase 1 is glorified original deer clubs. It is quite hard to dodge all the attacks but the damage isn't too high. But apparently on its phase 2, you get trapped inside this circle shadow arena and it can shoot deadly superman red 
eye beam. I really need to adapt to its face too. It's unique though, I like it. Before continuing on, I crafted the necro armor first. I should have done this even before fighting deer clops. I think necro armor really improved my pace during the deer clops fight. I think I did pretty smoothly this time. My skills has improved for the deer clops phase too. Looks like I'm getting very close to taking Dirklops to its final phase. But at this point, my health was extremely low. In this final phase, Dirklops has like floating ghost hands that keeps bothering you. I was so close to defeating this annoying snow dog, but I died right at the end. I refought the Dirklops again. I like the Dirklops design and all, but I always find fighting Dirklops a bit useless, you know? But hey, I managed to defeat Dirklops on like the fifth try, I think. Like I said before, it doesn't drop any useful loots, for me at least. I drank the gravitation potion, then I explored some sky islands. I finally explored the Dredon Lab in the main space planetoid. I think I got some few useful Dredon Lab stuff, but I don't know, nothing I really need to use for now. I got a Star Fury from a random sky island. I crafted a Slime God summoning item on a demon altar. On the next day, I summoned the Slime God. I don't think Slime God is hard. In fact, contrary to many people's opinions, it is easy. I know he that Slime God on my second try back in the day. The main key to defeating Slime God is having a huge ass arena. Don't worry, I am not that good. I still die to Infernum Slime God. On that night, a Blood Moon started out of nowhere. So before continuing to fight the Slime God, why not farm some money first in the Blood Moon? I'm shredding through the Blood Moon like butter. I strap on my diving gear, as I wanted to get the Archerfish gun first before continuing on fighting Slime God. I vividly remember it's like located in the Abyss chest. So me, being a fucking monkey, I explored like the whole abyss, which is like hard mode content. I shit you not, I don't even know how I managed to reach this far, yet I've encountered zero abyss chest. This is literally almost the deepest steps of the abyss. Okay, never mind, it actually is the deepest steps of the abyss. I'ma just mind the terminus on pre-hard mode. I just do be having peak intelligence like that. Turns out, they made Archer Fish into a craftable weapon in Infernum. All that effort for nothing. In order to craft it, I had to beat the Acid Rain to get Sulfuric Scales. Man, this event is easy. I've always skipped pre hard mode Acid Rain. This is actually the first time I'm doing it. Now that I obtained all the materials, I crafted the Archer Fish. This gun shoots like a stream of water. I think they might have nerfed the damage though. Now that I have the Archer Fish, it is time to fight the Slime God again. Slime God is basically like Slime King but on steroids. Honestly, the fight was kinda boring. Slime God's attack typically consists of shooting out like variations of slime spheres. On its phase 2, slime god splits itself into big red slime and purple slime. Both of them are extremely tanky. It is very hard to take their health down. Here is the part where it gets extremely annoying. I defeated one of the big slime. But weirdly enough, the slime god kept despawning from me. This happened multiple times, it is very annoying. After scrolling through Calamity Discord, turns out you have to defeat both of the slime god at once. Yes, you need to do that for them to not despawn. This is genuinely a very annoying bug. After I figured it out, I took slime god to its final phase. It unlocks new variants of attacks that are essentially a combination of the purple and red slime. I died to slime god phase 2 multiple times. However, the most annoying part is I have to fight this guy all over again. Slime God is by no means a hard boss, like I'ma be real with you. It is somewhat easy, but it's extremely annoying to deal with. It is very tanky and it has unnecessarily annoying feature. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this boss. After wasting too much time, I successfully defeated the Slime God. I opened the treasure bag and got the Electrolyte Gel pack to upgrade my Adrenaline Meter. I turned the gels drop from Slime God into Sati Gel Armor and the Gunk Shotgun. My gear should be ready against Wall of Flesh. Now that we finish most of pre-hard mode content, I jumped on the instant elevator to go to the underworld. I made an arena in the underworld. Let's give Wall of Flesh a shot. Okay, the first try is actually horrible. All you need to know is the arena is not long enough. While trying to extend the arena, I found the underworld Dredon Lab. Ah, the funny lab with the Murasama. Brings me memories every time. I also paid a visit to the Infernum Profane Garden Biome. We'll explore this biome further in hard mode. We'll need this biome to fight the Profane Trio and Providence later. Let's give the Wall of Flesh a second shot. My stubborn ass kept trying to fight Wall of Flesh despite having a cramped arena. It took me quite some days to realize that. I made the arena way bigger this time. This should help with the fight a lot more. Infernum Wall of Flesh is able to shoot like laser from its eyes, and like the eyes pop off and fly out from its organs. Very gruesome, yet awesome. The eyes float around you and shoot purple laser. I evaded the purple laser quite nicely. That might be a lie, because I'm not showing you the embarrassing part where I got hit. And there is this one attack where Wall of Flesh does its laser wall face. I kinda screwed it up because I was unprepared. Also, you can't be too far away from the Wall of Flesh, because if you do so, this guy can summon tentacles that can damage you. Damn, Infernum Wall of Flesh do be kinky. I am now able to dodge the laser wall face quite nicely, I think. 
That might possibly be a lie, because I still died a lot. I am really not the best at dodging these projectiles, but hey, I managed to strive through. Because not gonna lie, gang shot deals really good damage. Even though it doesn't appear to be flashy or look very strong, trust me, it is not bad at all. Then there we go, I managed to successfully defeat Wall of Flash. That wasn't too hard, I opened the treasure bag, and I consumed the demon heart to gain one more accessory slot. And that's all of Calamity Infernum pre hard mode as the gunner class. The hard mode part will come very soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, thank you and see ya.